Okay, in this tutorial, we're just going to take a quick look at smoke again. In fact, I'm going to start doing uh, quite a few tutorials on smoke and fluids and cycles rendering and, you know, the fun stuff, okay? So in this case, we're just going to start simple. We're just going to put a cube in the scene like this. I'll raise it up. And we're going to use this as our basic object for the smoke. So, of course, the easiest way to get started if you want to just go over here to object and you do quick effects and smoke like that. All right. But, and then when I just press Alt A suddenly it's generating smoke out of that cube and that's because this piece here inside if you look over here at the physics button it already has smoke and the flow set here and this outer one is going to be the domain set right there all right but now let's see let's do something else let's get rid of this guy just for a second let's put something like a cylinder in there instead so you see it and I'll just kind of shrink it down a little bit all right, so it's still within the cube. And I'm going to turn that into smoke flow. I'm just going to use the basic settings so it's coming out of the mesh like this. And let's just run it. I'm going to approximate I'm going to count it approximately time-wise. I want to grab this as well. I want to grab this so we can see what's going on here. So I'm going to press alt to A and maybe we're going to run it up to maybe frame 100 at the most. This is a short lesson here. All right, so I'll run it and let's see, one, two, three. Now nah, it's fast, right? Pretty fast. Okay, but now let's use this thing, adaptive domain in here. This kind of modifies the shape of the domain depending upon where the smoke is. So it theoretically should save you calculation time. All right, so let's try it and see what happens. Let's see, one, two, three, about the exact same thing. Okay, so you might not think it's worth much, but however, Let's just crank this up a little bit. Let's maybe make this say 70 because this is really what it comes down to. This resolution in here makes all the difference in the world. If you're really trying to generate fluid, smoke, anything like that, the resolution is what it's all about for starters. You want to crank this sucker up. All right, so now let's do it without this adaptive domain on this and let's run this here through 100 frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, uh, you know, somewhere like that. Okay, so uh, well, let's do it with this loaded on here. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, Oh, you know, it saves about 10 seconds. So if you don't believe that did it, let's do this. That we have this, would we see that resolution 70? Was that 70? All right, so I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm going to re-add it. Oops, I'll just re-add another one. That's approximately the same size, something like this. And then I'm just going to add that as smoke flow and come over here this is still set to 70 and I'm going to start it with the adaptive domain set and let's try it in here one two three four five six about six there and then I'll do it without it one two three four five so basically it's in this case it's having to calculate everything with this, this entire volume. So it's a smart algorithm they implemented. That's one of the coolest things about Blender is there's a lot of really smart people working on this project and it gives us a great deal of power as, as artists and animators to take advantage of it. And so we should. Okay, well that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video.